Consider the following case. Edgar Welch, a character in the Pizzagate story, forcibly entered the restaurant Comet Ping Pong with a rifle. He wanted to investigate whether the restaurant had held child slaves, which is a part of the conspiracy theory that designated the Democratic Party officials of the US as participants of a human trafficking ring. He didn't find any child slaves, and then gave himself up to be arrested. The conspiracy theory community, however, took the event as a fake, a fabrication of mainstream media, and labeled Welch a paid actor used to discredit the theory. I'm sure to Welch's dismay. So, what are we seeing here? What we're seeing is the mechanisms of an echo chamber at work. An echo chamber is any belief system that involves the idea that sources and testimonies outside of that system are not to be trusted. The function of these unique ideas is to discredit the external sources that assume a different view. This mechanism is called evidential preemption. For instance, for conspiracy theory communities such as 9-11 truthers, anti-vaxxers, and climate change deniers, any testimony from the science community are, by their very belief systems, coded or preconceived as untrustworthy. Thus, any contrary testimonies produced by those external sources cannot damage these belief systems in any way. It doesn't stop there. Not only are echo chambers impervious to contrary testimonies, Contrary testimonies actually fortify the echo chambered beliefs. This closely related protective mechanism is called disagreement reinforcement, which is expressed through the idea that contrary testimonies are not only false and untrustworthy, but the sources of those testimonies are motivated by hidden and malicious agendas, one key agenda being to discredit the belief system of the echo chamber community itself. In other words, echo chambers also involve a kind of paranoid persecution complex that pre-explains outside ideas as out to get them. And therefore, each exposure to contrary testimony would in fact serve to fortify the beliefs of its members. This makes sense if you are already lodged in a chamber. For instance, if you already believe that 5G is somehow related to mind control, that it's reasonable for you to believe that those who tell you that it is not are lying to you, gaslighting you, and that they're motivated by the hidden motive of eventually realizing mass-scale mind control. It makes sense for them to undermine you because you are disrupting their plans. Your belief of your theory will be stronger every time you encounter contrary views. And when talking to others in the same echo chamber, the community will share the same stories of being gaslighted by everyone else, thus collectively deepening the conviction about the theory. Similarly, if you are already lodged in the Pizzagate conspiracy theory, then the report that a believer investigated Comet Ping Pong to have found no signs of human trafficking and was then arrested, this could only be interpreted or coded as a ploy to discredit your belief system and community which confirms the suspicion that you have had all along, which would lead you to further conclude that your enemies are more powerful and resourceful than you had previously estimated. This combined effect of the mechanisms of evidential preemption and disagreement reinforcement is that in each failure to explain a phenomena, the theory will immediately reconceive and enhance the power of its enemies rather than changing the theory itself, which is what evidence-based theories do. I'll label this mechanism as externality mystification. Why can't we find any evidence that the moon landing footages were fake? Because the government hides it too well. For the Nazis, the socioeconomic crisis of interwar Germany was blamed on the Jews, whom they believed were secretly controlling Germany. For anti-Semitic conspiracy theory believers today, again, Nazis, one of the reasons why Nazi Germany lost the war was because the Jews were simply too resourceful. For the American and British liberals who tried to explain their losses in 2016, this means the mystification of factors such as Russian cyber interference and Cambridge Analytica micro-targeting. Paranoid theories about communists infiltrating the universities and the governments would also be a good example. So, it's a visible pattern that echo chambers, whether in the form of a conspiracy, cult, or political movement, are defined by a robust and hysterical conception of their enemies. So, any echo chamber is defined by at least one of the three mechanisms, 
evidential preemption, which is the coding of external contrary testimonies as false and untrustworthy. Disagreement reinforcement, namely the coding of contrary testimonies as motivated by hidden agendas, often to discredit the echo chamber, thus further fortifying the chamber. And externality mystification, which is the recoding of external forces as more powerful than the chamber had previously estimated when the chamber fails to explain something.